Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I have some very big updates for you. You definitely want to watch this video to the end. Elon Musk has stated that once Bitcoin miners have crossed 50% in usage of renewable energy, Tesla will accept Bitcoin as a payment once again. Very bullish news. We know they still hold the Bitcoin they bought on their balance sheet, but this, as far as the payment, is a target um, amount that we can look forward to, or a milestone, I should say. And I, I'll break down why this is bullish and what else may be uh, coming out of this. In addition, the president of El Salvador, obviously they just made Bitcoin a legal tender, he tweeted that the Central Bank of El Salvador, which has billions uh, of dollars in assets, is bullish on the new Bitcoin law. And could some of that money go into Bitcoin? I think so. And we're going to talk about some China mining FUD, which uh, has been debunked, and South Korea and some crypto investments, and a lot more, guys. A lot of good stuff. Be sure to watch the video to the end. Before we go further, please hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, friendly reminder, I have a free weekly newsletter full with crypto insights and knowledge. Be sure to subscribe, link in the description. In addition, this video is sponsored by OKCoin, which has the lowest fees around, guys. Why pay high fees when you're buying, selling, or trading your crypto? Sign up with OKCoin, link in the description. So Bitcoin is on the move here, guys. It is over $38,000 right now. Let me refresh here just to make sure it's not moving faster than we can see here. And it is up uh, near 8% from a 24-hour perspective up 8.47 from a seven day perspective. So let's see if this news from Elon and Tesla uh, drives it up. Now, you know, we've been talking about it on this channel that we were in a con correction phase, right? And it was a consolidation. And I honestly, if you saw my newsletter from today, I think it was an accumulation phase. And I personally bought the dip, not financial or investment advice. And I do believe, you know, according to the macro level charts that I've been sharing with you guys, like the stock to flow model, as well as the macro level models from Equinometrics, right? This is data. This is trends. This is not feelings or emotions or what we would like or wishful thinking. Rather, how is the market played out historically and what is it doing now and the potential of the next move? And obviously, we're not talking about like daily, weekly moves or anything like that. We're looking at uh, monthly and 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 bi-monthly and things like that. A lot, you know, quarterly. We're looking at it from a macro level because if you're looking daily and hourly, oh my gosh, you're you're gonna be depressed, right? Because the market is so volatile. You gotta zoom out. So Plan B stated the following: two hundred eighty-eight thousand still in play. It would really surprise me if Bitcoin would not touch the black S2FX model line this phase. Regardless Regardless of current volatility, yellow, green, and blue dots will be much higher than the red, orange dots. So things are on track according to the, to the data, right? Now, is this 100% accurate? Obviously not. It's not guaranteed. It's not a prediction of the future. It's just a, a hypothesis, essentially. W what's the likelihood of scenarios playing out? And I think the likelihood is that we keep going higher. We will have more corrections along the way. Even the Equinometrics uh, data here using the Bitcoin halving chart, here's what they said. Uh, Bitcoin, after the halving uh, June 13th, 2021, 397 days after the third halving, Bitcoin at 35,900. If you are trading the digital gold narrative, there is a 4x to 15x potential upside from the current price level. Said differently, Bitcoin remains an ace symmetric bet so this is based on the having cycle the reduction of the supply and the demand has been growing and we've been talking about banks and, and all these different folks jumping in now one of the major uh, factors as to why a lot of these institutional investors are jumping in the federal reserve balance sheet tops eight trillion dollars for the first time so inflation money printing is is at a record high i mean i think the u.s printed more money last year than it ever did in the history of it being a nation right um and that is leading to inflation guys the money sitting in your bank this is like a hidden secret tax that majority of people don't know it, it loses value over the years. You don't have the same purchasing power. And that's why companies like Tesla, MicroStrategy, and many others, and look, well, I think we're all waiting to see Facebook, Google, and Apple jump in or Amazon. Um, they are putting Bitcoin in their balance sheet as a hedge, right? Because it's uh, holding the value, but it's also growing over time. 
And here it says this article, the US central bank will continue buying treasury and mortgage bonds to support the economy. So obviously, they, they need to, to do some of this, but they've been doing it for years, quantitative easing. So this is just it's snowballing at this point, right? Now, here's the big news, guys. Elon Musk says Tesla will accept Bitcoin again as crypto miners use more clean energy. Tesla CEO uh, Elon Musk on Sunday said the company will resume Bitcoin transactions once it confirms there's reasonable clean energy usage by miners. Here's a quote. When there is confirmation of reasonable approximately 50% clean energy usage by miners with positive future trend, Tesla will resume allowing Bitcoin transactions, Musk wrote in a tweet. The electric car maker halted car purchases with Bitcoin in mid-May due to concerns over how mining contributes to climate change. Now, we've talked about this ad nauseum, guys. Elon is no dummy, obviously one of the smartest uh, guys in the history of the world. I mean, you see what he's doing, right? And I think the reason why he backtracked on this whole clean energy thing was uh, the green energy credit. We talked about it from the government. He would lose those respective things. So he had to take a stance. Um, and I think we saw uh, Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank, said that his te his uh, the Tesla shareholders essentially pressured him to do this. Now, one thing, I understand that, and don't get me wrong, right? I mean, we have to be reasonable. One thing I don't like about Elon is the meme that he's been tweeting, which moves the market. And this guy has to know what he's doing. I mean, he's one of the most influential people in tech in the world, right? And just all the companies, all the things he has his hands in. So he's, he's got to be better at this. The meme part is really annoying. And, and, and uh, I think you guys may have seen my tweet about that. But he's clearly still bullish on Bitcoin and they still hold the Bitcoin on their balance sheet. And he also stated that he still owns his, or holds his personal Bitcoin holdings. So he, they haven't dumped it. They're just not accepting his payment. And maybe this was his way to force miners to move to clean energy. I don't know. Um, I recently interviewed Marathon Digital Holdings CEO Fred Thiel. They are the largest Bitcoin mining company. Uh, a uh, company in the United States. If, if you haven't seen that interview, check it out. Link in the description. But uh, we talk about ESG, Elon, El Salvador, all those things, and even they are moving to more uh, more usage of renewable energy. So we're seeing um, you know a shift that way, um, and Bitcoin will benefit guys over time. And uh, the fact that Musk is making this statement, we're seeing some market movements. I wish it wasn't like that. That shows how uh, young the market still is. It has to mature. One guy cannot move the market like this. This is not good. But that doesn't mean that you throw out the baby with the bathwater. You have to put things in context, how early we are and the maturation that needs to happen. As the big institutional players come in and countries and central banks, it won't be that way um, in, you know, in the coming years. But still, obviously, a huge potential to make significant return here. Now, check this out. President Naib Bukele, uh, president of El Salvador, which just made Bitcoin a legal tender, he tweeted the following. The president of the Central American Bank with $13.5 billion in assets supports our Bitcoin law. Guys, <laughs> you know, when I stated the other day, game theory, other countries are gonna follow suit. Um, it, while it may not happen in the United States, central banks around the world are gonna hold Bitcoin. And as I've stated before, it starts with Bitcoin, then they'll move to other cryptos. And, you know, there are maximalists and tribalism in the crypto market. If Bitcoin does well, the entire market does well, guys. The data shows the market moves with Bitcoin. The altcoins follow Bitcoin's move. So I'm hoping, you know, the, these news items coupled together gives Bitcoin that uh, momentum it needs to break out. And we're going to go to new higher highs. So I'm excited. I'm bullish. And even just recently, uh, this was reported about a day or two ago, China's Yuan, uh, Yun, Yunnan province does not appear to be shutting down Bitcoin miners. An earlier report was based on a fabricated image. And I tweeted about this. I think this was a FUD piece put out there. Whoever paid for it or did what, I think they knew what they were doing. They wanted to drive the price down further. And that is either to lower the entry point for, for, for institutions and for themselves or or, uh, or in addition, um, the shorting, right? A lot of these guys are shorting the market. So I think we've hit full uh, fear and, and uh, you know, the free, fear and greed index, the fear level has hit really low. So I think we're at the bottom, you know, the ground floor, and now we work our way back up.
So guys, check this out. South Koreans can pay with Bitcoin and Stacks Paycoin integration. So Stacks, by the way, this is available on OKCoin if you want to check it out. Um, and Paycoin are offering uh, Bitcoin returns on e-commerce transactions within South Korea. We're just seeing all kinds of use cases and incentives and the building out of the infrastructure. This is awesome. So this integration means that merchants who accommodate Paycoin will soon accept STX and Bitcoin as payment as methods of payments. Uh, the Stacks Foundation, which builds apps on top of the Bitcoin blockchain, announced businesses that accept Paycoin, such as Domino's Pizza, KFC, and 7-Eleven, will allow for customers to transact in these cryptocurrencies. There, excuse me, there are 1 million users of the Paycoin application and 70,000 businesses that accept this cryptocurrency. Very bullish, guys. Um, now, the Bitcoin upgrade, Taproot, it is locked in. Bitcoin's Taproot upgrade gets its 90% mandate. Taproot opens, the, opens up new possibilities for privacy, multi-signature wallets, and security, as well as scaling. This is good for Bitcoin, guys, as it grows and providing scaling solutions. So, according to the parameters set forward by Speedy Trial, if at least 90% of the blocks mined in any of the designated two-week difficulty periods signal their support for the upgrade, then the activation process can begin. To be more precise, 1,815 out of the 2016 blocks mined within a period have include a little piece of encoded information that in indicates that the miner who mined that block is in favor of the upgrade. So great, great news. So Taproot is Bitcoin's most anticipated upgrade since segregated witness uh, the SegWit in 2017. Whereas the main focus of SegWit was scaling for the Bitcoin protocol, Taproot will outfit Bitcoin with a new signature scheme known as the Schnorr signatures, if I'm saying that right. This small adjustment to Bic the Bitcoin code opens up new possibilities for privacy, multi-signature wallets, and security, as well as scaling. So we shall see how this plays out, but this is great news. And once again, I don't care how if you love or you hate Bitcoin, we need Bitcoin to do well because the data shows all coins move a Bitcoin. And you'll see as Bitcoin moves over 40,000, it also will start to follow. And we haven't re reached decoupled. Uh, you know, I wish it was decoupled, you know, where alts can move like let's say ethereum or xrp or cardano could pump individually without bitcoin having to do anything but unfortunately the market is tied to bitcoin that's how early we are guys so i am uh excited for the future of the market i hold bitcoin in my portfolio um it is my number two in my portfolio xrp is my number one ethereum is my number three i have some cardano and no i don't hold dogecoin <laughs> i have uh some litecoin from years ago i have Chainlink. i'm bullish on Chainlink, guys and um I, i'm looking i have some stellar as well i'm looking at what's going to make me a good return and i diversify to reduce the risk in my portfolio if any one of these projects fails then i have other cryptos that can do well and obviously bitcoin um doing well <laughs> makes my portfolio look awesome guys what do you think about this news this elon musk news as well as this uh news about the president of the central american bank with over 13 billion dollars in assets is bullish on the the el salvador bitcoin law i think big things great things are ahead and we got to be patient and keep watching the news here and what's taking place and who's doing what right not so much what they say but what are they doing so exciting times ahead and i hope you you're looking at the market from a macro level and uh, maybe we see bitcoin cross forty thousand dollars tonight Guys, leave your thoughts, comments below, hit the thumbs up button, share this video, be sure to subscribe, and I'll talk to you all later.